In this video, we're going to work on the sixth application exercise, which is Nobels and sales and data import. So we're going to work with two separate data sets here. One of them is the Nobels data set and the other one is the sales data set. And we're going to work on importing the data and in one case, exporting the data and writing it out to a CSV file as well. So we have two R Markdown files in this application exercise. We're going to start with Nobel CSV. Um, in this exercise, we are asked to load the data uh, from the data raw folder, which is called nobels.csv, and then we are to split the data into two. One of them is for STEM laureates and the other one for non-STEM. And then finally, we're asked to write out the data. So let's go ahead and work on this. And when we write out the data, we are asked to write it out to the data folder, all right? Um, so let's go ahead and start by loading the data. I'm going to first run the first code chunk where I load the tidyverse. And I'm going to do a few other things. I'm going to say that when I knit the document, I want to view it in the viewer pane and I prefer to have my chunk outputs in console. Okay, it's a CSV file that we're loading, which means that we're going to use the read underscore CSV function. And where we're loading it from is the data-raw folder. And in this folder, the um, uh, file is called nobel.csv. I want to turn your attention to what I just did here. I said, okay, I know that it's in the uh, data-raw folder. And then I click on tab and our, ask, our studio asks me, which one of these do you want? So I can actually go between them. So if I had a long name for my data, uh, file i don't have to type it out myself i can just work with that so let's go ahead and load this data um and in my environment i can see a, a object called nobel so let's open this up and we know that one of the um one of the variables in this data set is called category. And some of these categories are STEM fields and others are not STEM fields. So in the um, course uh, video, we had given you which ones are STEM fields. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly pull up the uh, instructions for this. And so for that, I'm going to take a look at the slides. So let's go down to week uh, four, importing and recoding data. And this was in the importing data lecture. So let's go ahead and plop, uh, pull up the slides for that. And scroll to where we were asked to do this. So we are told, oops, sorry. We are told that we want to create a new data frame called Nobel STEM, and the fields are physics, medicine, chemistry, and economics. So I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to copy this character string. And also note that we're, we're given a hint, use the pipe operator when filtering. So let's go back to our Studio Cloud, and let's see what we can do here. We want to create this uh, data frame with filter, and we want to say category is, bear with me for a second, one of these, right? And then really for the other one, what we want to do is we want to say category is not one of these, right? And this is going to be Nobel STEM, where the category is one of these uh, four, and the other one is going to be Nobel non-STEM. So the question is, how do I actually turn this into code? So for saying is one of these, I can use the in operator. And with the in operator, I'm going to give it a vector of all possible options. Since these are character strings, what I'm doing is I'm highlighting the um, variable, uh, highlighting the character string that I want to quote, since that's how our understands those are character strings. And then if I just uh, press a quote, it actually will put it on either side, and we don't need the um, and here when we're defining our vector. So here we have, for if category is in one of these, that's going to be Nobel STEM. So let's go ahead and do the other one as well. But this time I want to say category is not in one of these. So in order to be able to do that, I would have to use the exclamation point to say not. 
and we actually can um, then uh, put the rest of that logical statement in parentheses. So let's go ahead and do this, run this, and we can see that we now have two data sets. One is Nobel non-STEM and the other is Nobel STEM. 688 observations in Nobel STEM, 247 in Nobel non-STEM, Quick mental math, the sum of those actually adds up to 935, so we know that we captured everything. If I pop open one of these and I can quickly scan to see if I got things right, in fact, the category is, um, looks like it is STEM fields. This is a pretty long data set to scroll through like this. So a quick check at uh, what are the actual categories in the Nobel STEM. Um, Data frame might be to say, give me the distinct categories. So I get physics, chemistry, medicine, and economics. And in fact, I know that that's, uh, that's what I wanted. And I can look at the same thing for Nobel non-STEM and peace and literature are in non-STEM. So this is all looking good. So now what we want to do is we want to write these files out. So let's start with Nobel STEM. And we know that we're going to write them out with write underscore CSV. Uh, we want to write out the Nobel STEM object and the file is going to be, we want it to be put in the data folder and I will call it nobel-stem.csv. Now I want to show you one thing real quick. My data folder currently is empty. If I was to run this code, um, oh, sorry, let's go ahead and run this code. In fact, I am getting a nobel-stem.csv. Um, we can do the same thing with um, the other one, nobel non-stem. And we're going to call this nobel non-stem here. And in fact, now I have nobel non-stem written out as well. Next, let's take a look at the other um, exercise in this application exercise, which is the sales, where we read from, uh, Excel, from an Excel file. So the first uh, instruction says to read in the Excel file called sales.xlsx from the data raw folder. So let's go navigate there and see, okay, we do have an Excel file there, such that it looks like the following. Um, maybe we should knit this document to see what that following is. Okay, so we want it to look like this, all right? Um, and let's go ahead and try reading it in to see what it looks like to begin with, and then we can see what we need to do about it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, load the packages that I need, and maybe we can call the sales. And because it is an Excel file, I'm going to say read Excel, and I want to read from the data raw folder. And it's the sales. So let's go ahead and read it as is. And let's see what we get. Okay, some new names. All right. Um, oh, all right. So when I read the file in, I can see that there is some sort of a header <coughs> that says something like this file contains information on sales. So this is the metadata that we talked about. And then there's a second row that says data are organized by name for each brand. And we have the ID number for items sold and how many are sold, okay? Um, so we definitely want to do something about this. This is looking pretty wonky. So we definitely want to do something about this. So it seems to me like we have, there's that one row that says this file contains information on sales. The next one that says data are organized, blah, blah. And then we have two more rows before we get to the first one where it says brand, right? And also this first, um, line is being read in as a header because that's usually what we have in our data frames like a header row with the variable names but in this particular case we actually don't have a header on top so the first thing that we might want to do is take a look at the help for read excel to see how we can uh ask that um it reads the data in um for us 
of skipping those top two rows. So let's go ahead and look at the help. And it says in read Excel, we give it the path and then do, 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 do. we can give it some particular column names. That might be handy. If we take a look at our uh, viewer, we know that we want to give it the names ID and N but those are not things that are represented in my data viewer when I just like read the data in. So it might be something I'm going to need to manually input. And going back to the help, I can also see that there's an option to skip. So let's scroll down to see what skip says. Minimum number of rows to skip before reading anything, be it column names or data. And if there were any leading empty rows, they would have been automatically skipped. But in this case, that's not uh, what we're working with. We just want to skip those top um, maybe three rows. Here seems to be the three rows that we want to skip. So let's go ahead and try that. What happens if I say skip three rows? and take a look at sales. Okay, so now if I do a skip three rows and take a look at sales, I get rid of that text on top, but now things like brand one and N are being read in as though they are column headers, but we know that the column names that I want are ID and N, so it looks like I'm going to need to specifically give it some column names. So let's go ahead and use the specific column names argument. So that's call names is going to be ID and N. So let's go ahead and do this to see if we get what we want. Okay. So now our data actually looks like it is a data frame with nine rows in two columns, right? Um, where the first uh, column is called ID and the second one is called N. And then we basically have some brand information. So these seem like brand identifiers and then the number of observations in each. So we're certainly making progress here. Although this is not really a tidy data frame now. Uh, we have this N repeated here. So it seems like we probably need to do some more stuff. So that's the stretch goal for the exercise. So, so far what we've done is we've simply used the arguments in the read Excel function to be able to get to what we need, but we probably want to tidy this data up a little bit. So we're told to manipulate the sales data such that it looks like the following. So we really want to have three columns. One of them is an identifier for brand. The other one is an identifier for the ID of the brand. And the last one are these counts that we're seeing. So let's go back and try to see what we might be able to do. So I'm, go I'm going to this time actually manipulate the sales data frame that I have. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with that sales data frame that we've already read in. And um, how might we want to go about this? So we want to uh, give it a, um, we're going to do a few things. So we want to create a new variable called brand, right? So that's probably a mutate. And that variable called brand is going to have the values brand one or brand two in it. And the way we want to do that is so I would add a new variable here. So I'm working off of the sales data frame. So I want to add a new variable. And really what I want to do is first I need to identify if one of my rows has a brand name information in it anyway. Because if it does, then I can use that information. And if it doesn't, then I'm going to need to do something else with it. So let's go ahead and try to say, I'm going to create a identifying uh, column. So I'm going to call it is brand name. And what I want to say is that if you find the character string that starts with the word brand in that ID column, give me true, otherwise give me false. So here's a new function that I'll teach you uh, working with uh, character strings. And that is str detect. So I'm looking to see, see if I can detect the variable uh, character string called brand. So if I run this, um, oh, sorry, I want to look for that in the ID column. 
So if I run this, basically what I end up with is a new column called is brand name that gives me some trues or falses. In order to make things a little bit more legible, I'm going to go ahead and say I want my chunk output in console. All right, let's try this one more time. So let's go ahead and run this. Great. So if the character string that included brand was in the column ID, then is brand name is true. Otherwise, it's false. Okay. So now I can use this information to say, um, if I have, I can create a new uh, variable called um, brand and I can use an if else statement this time to say if is brand name is true, um, then make it whatever the value in the ID column is and otherwise just leave it alone. So now I actually have the brand one and brand two uh, kind of moved over to this new column called brand. So that's starting to look good. But if I look at my stretch goal, I need to be able to fill in uh, these rows over here and over here. I need to be able to fill in these rows. So how am I going to go about that? Well, there is a really nice function in the tidy R package called uh, fill and I want to give it the variable that I want to fill that will actually fill in those empty lines so until it hits the next one it places the same value that it sees from the previous row so once again the pipeline up until here left me with NAs for wherever there wasn't that character string brand one or brand two and fill basically allows me to fill in the rest of that it almost seems magical but it is true so we still have a ways to go though, right? So we now have um, basically a column that has brand one and brand two. We have the IDs and we also have the ends, but we have these additional rows that we don't want in our data frame. So now I'm in the business of getting rid of some rows depending on particular um, characteristics. Well, if I want to get rid of some rows, that's a filter for me. And one way to get rid of them would be to say, if this column called is brand name is true, get rid of them. So basically I want everything where is brand name is false. So if I do this, it's a true false variable that would only give me the true. So instead I want the not is brand name. So now I have something a little bit more like what I want. These are not in the right order though, right? I want the uh, variables brand, and then I want ID, and then I want N, and I actually don't want that interim variable that I had uh, created, which was the is brand name one that I created as a helper to get to the ultimate goal that I have. So finally, now we have the data in the uh, shape that we want. We learned two new functions here. One of them is working with character strings and um, we're going to work with character strings a lot more in a few weeks when we talk about web scraping. So you'll see a lot more of these functions that start with the uh, prefix str. They come from the string R package for working with character strings. So this is just a sneak preview of that. And we learned one new function called fill and this function comes from the uh, tidy R package that we have uh, previously uh, talked about where we worked with the pivot functions from those. So now we're looking at the uh, another function called fill, which will basically fill in missing values in our data frame until the next one that's not missing. So if I go ahead and knit this document, And what I'll do is for the first code chunk, after I read things in, I actually print out my data frame as well, just so we can see that here is the figure, the image that I wanted, and my output looks exactly like that. And also for my stretch goal, here is the image that I wanted, and my output looks exactly like that.